remember when I was growing up, there's a few of my friends um, and they used to come to my house. My granddad used to just, and just cut the hair off and that's about it. The ability is to cut good hair and have a good friendship with your customers is 50-50 because if the customers come in and you don't get a good ear cut, he's not going to come back. And if the customers come in and you get a good ear cut and you're still don't friendly with him, he's still not going to come back. So you got customers come in, I don't have to ask him no question. I know exactly what he want because that customers have been trimming him like 15 years, 12 years, 10 years. So he come in, he sit down, can you cut me here and let me go? The barbershop culture that resides within the 32 boroughs of London is extensively unique unto itself. On the streets of South London, there are over 500 operating barbershops, open for business to thousands of people that are washed the city every day. Having adopted a large Caribbean influence in many of the boroughs, London is home to a large number of Jamaican-owned establishments. These black barber shops, often situated deep in the ethnic districts of the city, have been providing unique style to a vast variety of clientele for decades. And also during this time, quickly came to function as an important part of the social economy. This documentary takes us through the doors of just a few of the shops trading throughout the course of one day to make an observation of what creates such a thriving social environment within the four walls of a barber shop in the city. First Choice Barbers on Catford Hill in South London has been open to the public for over 10 years, owned and run by a Jamaican barber known as Push. Working side by side with Fish, each day is fellow traditional barber, nicknamed after the island of which he originates, Trinidad. Uh, she said I messed it up at the first place, but... <laughs> <laughs> she said you messed it up at the first place. Yeah, first man. Place. But, but I, thought, I thought it still looked alright, still. Uh, after you messed it up, mm. you can't answer you messed it up. Mm -hmm. And then you think it's alright. Yeah. Nah, man, this is what makes you <laughs> for virgin. To cut the hair. You, you stick to your profession, yeah? And you see, if I never, if I move around, mm -hmm. it means say, okay, your job is your job, my job is my job, yeah? So yeah. next time when you want your ear cut, you don't sit down and try to do it for yourself, <laughs> yeah? Find barbers, okay? All right, man. That's, that's what first choice barber is here to do, yeah? Hey, what about I'll take your word. Yeah, what is happening here? Ah, don't yeah? see what's happening. I need my hair cut. Popper cards. I need the popper cards, man. Um, I come here in 1988, and when I come here, um, I start in Brixton in a barber shop named Penny's Barbers, and that's where I learn most of my skill in barbering. And then I leave there and I go to barber shop in in Battersea and Lavender Hill named Fagan Barbers. Archie's Barbers and then I leave there and I go to Fulham Broadway. I stay there for seven years. I leave coming to Brackley. I work in Blades Barbers for another year. I decided said I'm not gonna work for no one else as so long as I'm gonna do barbering is for myself. It's a lovely place to cut the hair. Me, I've got another place. Every time when I go to Paris, I always travel to Paris. They say ah, the day I'll come to London, you take me where you cut your hair. Where you always dream. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Oh, for a decade now. For a long t for a, for for a decade, a long time. Is that the that you you have enough of the Mahika? What's wrong with your nose? Your father was playing too much, aren't you? What sort of service do you expect when you come to a barbershop like this? Um yeah, he expects um to feel relaxed. Um, feel comfortable, expect to get your hair cut nice and neat and you know not to, I've been to a few barber shops where you, they sort of drag your head around a bit and but now you feel relaxed, comfortable and a couple of times you know I've been so relaxed I have actually fallen asleep in the chair. So, what, you getting a haircut? Yeah. <laughs> 
So, yeah. Many people who grew up within the culture, the barber shop is more than just a place to have their hair styled. It is an environment that proudly represents being part of a social community. <laughs> I always have a good crowd coming here. The guys who come here, they are very good people. The kids them come here. I know all of them, mom and dad, and we all have fun, joke, laugh, and we is very. Nice environments for me, and we never have any problem okay. in the shop. We are always sitting down, chatting, laughing, having a drink. We we is fun, and everyone who come here, I think to myself, they all enjoy themselves and they love, they like the environments what they get. Yeah. Anything to our parents when we grow? Anything what we said? Anything what they said? That's what we have to do. Time for bed. We have to go to bed. When you go to the barbers. You couldn't tell the barbers what you want. You get in the chair, you, you walk in, and when you walk in, if the, if the shop full of big people, they, they put you in the chair first, come boy, and they stick you in the chair and they walk, 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 and send you out. And then the big man sit down and drink and talk and laugh. And we as the kids, we have to do, just get the ear cut and go. So no matter how full the shop is, the kids always get the ear cut first and go. The big people, they sit down and wait till later. But nowadays the kids them they call the shot. They said what they want, where they want to go, who they want to do it. And first time you couldn't say nothing at all to your parents. You walk in and you said to your dad, oh, that can I have so and so? He's like, shut up boy and take what you get. But now we can't say that to the kids. We have to just flow, flow yeah. with what they if said. They want, yeah, if they yeah. want cereal in the morning, but yeah. cereal. Yeah. 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 In the morning. The district of Hernhill borders on the boroughs of Southwark and Lambeth in South London. Approximately six miles west of Catford, Hernhill is the native to another Caribbean and hair studio, Clip Art, managed and run by skilled Caribbean stylist Johnny. what do you do me? You think me not a barber shop from that? Me never met them trim me again. Them trim me trim me till I'm tired. But one thing me never like a barber charge. Me not like when them draw the razor and the big something they do. Yeah? Now the leather man, the cut short one. Yeah? Cut short, right, man. Yeah. yeah, me have one too. What one? Um, we did have, we have a, we did have a customer and they bring one come give me a long time. I haven't seen him for a while either. Girl dead, the back side. Spraga is a young barber from Kingston, Jamaica. He has been working at Clip Art for over 13 years. The documentary took the opportunity to speak with him and gather his opinion on the trade. You have a lot of things happen during the day, like you have to have a laugh. You have all different kind of people pass through. So basically you have a laugh. What kind of characters do you get in? Is it very varied? We get all kind of all kind of characters. We get the funny, the serious. Just all sort of all different sort of people. And you just you just make your day. Make your day. Because sometimes you can be sad, angry, and you get a lot. You get these customers what come in and just change the whole day for you. Was it
this is where I cut my hair and I've got loads of friends here. The guys who own the shop is my friend from back home. So it's like friend family thing. So I'll be coming here, chilling out, have a drink, flex about, basic, just chill out. Cut my hair, chill out. Sometime all week, sometime no week. Sometime disappear for a couple of months. Yeah, 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 if I'm about, yeah. Sometime I'm not in London, sometime I'm in Jamaica, in America. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Jamaica, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. The barber is like a, is like a family. So sometime when a customer come, he just sit for a while. He, just, he don't just leave just like that. But you have some, they are, they are on the move. While some come have a haircut to have a chat. So it's like they come home. It's like they're at their home. They, they come and release their stress. They will tell about about anything. Boy, I'm out there at work. Or I have problem with a girlfriend, I have problem with that. It's just like you're at home, it's just like a place where it's a very... This environment is like, well, well, how would I put it? It's like uh, you go to the... Like, say you go to a physio or a, or a masseuse. Like to get it, like it relieves you. Like you can sit and talk like you're in a friendly place. You understand? No care how hungry you be. So when you get in the barbers, it's like, yeah, calm environment. In my career doing barbering, I enjoy it very much and I meet a lot of good people and a lot of bad people. You got, I get good advice from people and I put it to use. It do affect your personal life a lot, especially when it comes down to barber. A lot of barber, I would say a lot of us as barber, we always find we personal life rocking because Maybe the fam, the missus or maybe the girlfriend or whatever way we have it, we think of it. Wife, missus, girlfriend, some of we say with girl, whatever way we have it. They always arguing as barber, you're not spending enough time at home with them. And it's come down to be, you leave home, said 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, to come and get business start going, said 9, 30, 10. When you finish work, you might sit down and have a drink with your friend, chat, laugh, because they's all here. You ain't gonna run them away because they are the people who support you. So you sit down, spend a little time with them, chat, laugh, and you might find, say, okay, a friend of you are keeping a party. You go, you support, you try to give them a support because they come and cut their ear here. So you would love to spread yourself around. But while the family is there, Leave by themselves. Either you're a cheater, or you don't stay at home with me, or something. Because you're just trying to make ends move the way you'd, you'd like it to move. But then the family gonna think, oh, my dad finished work at 8, or my husband finished work at 8, so he would be home by quarter past 8, he said 8.39. They said, she said 9, 10 o'clock, come on, she's still not here. But you're still here working. You get what I'm saying? The, the social life now started to turn upside it down and everybody started to argue. Oh? I try to keep back from that, you know what I mean? That come check me yesterday, what do you know? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm just thinking about why I can't, I can't get to come because through your, my situation, you know? Yeah. And that me and me have said that long time still now, because I can't see it coming like say, the, the man them just, me don't understand what I'm going to do. What did you say? Hey, hey, fish. Yo, for next year come, uh -huh. Don't I'll be a senior citizen. Yeah. So what I want? I said, I'll pay a full play. You, 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 you oh. are 75? <laughs> 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 you are 75 next year? Yeah, yeah. What do you say? I have to see some dinner because... Oh, wow. Hey, I have a bus pass. Oh, sorry. I'm going to use the time. Yeah? yeah, man. Go and make the man film you too, man. Turn no, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me use the time for a second. Um, no, no, 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, every talk, you, 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 you get me. All right, hear me. Original thing. A barber shop I go on from 19 how long? The man I'm a bona fide friend and anybody want a proper haircut, you just come here, sir. Because the rest of man say it. I don't take haircut, but I'm talking about it. Eh hey, hey. That's it. I'm me some. Yes, sir. I'm I can't touch you. Come here and mess up. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Yo! Come here! Come here! Come here! I'm from like Catford. Been coming to fishing shop for about say eight, nine years. What do you mean to me? Well, keeps me looking good because I can't do the shape up myself. Um, Is it somewhere you come to, to to meet and talk to people? Um, no, nah, not really. I just come here, get a straight chin out again. Went from the Everglades, howling the name Kwakuche. When did you leave Jamaica? I leave Jamaica on 7th of October 1967 on BOAC Flight 500, leaving Kingston at 11.45. That's very specific. Yeah, man, I can't forget that day because that was a special day in my life. If I go to the barbershop in Jamaica, I can have a pedicure, I can have a manicure, I can have a facial, everything. Basically, in London, it's just barber. Wow. Yeah, that I mean. Just all around. Yeah, yeah. When I go to the barber shop in Jamaica, I can have everything I want. Like I said, facial, manicure, if I desire, pedicure, even massage. Yeah, man. I've been here 40 odd years. Yeah, my body is here, but my spirit is in Jamaica. This man been cutting me here from oh god, about, what, about 10, 15 years. Well, as long as he's been in this country, he's been cutting me here, yeah? You can come in, you can interact with the brethren and things like that, and, you know, there's no fuss and fight as far as we're concerned, you know? So when you uh -huh. come to the barbershop, um, obviously you come for a haircut initially. You have to talk about old times and everything, reminisce, talk about women and all that. Yeah. You know? Do you find it quite a therapeutic quite kind of atmosphere to be in, like yeah. to be able to release, yeah. you know, and vent? Oh, oh, yeah. Comfortable environment. Comfortable, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes when you feel a bit down, you can always come in and have a laugh with the lads. Yeah, he's coming. Joe. Well, I'm passing him most, most people that I'm trimming are not. I always come in to see him anyway. So maybe passing, popping? Yeah, once or twice a week. Yeah. So I don't have to be trimming to come in. Yeah, I think it varies from town to town, but you know, it's, it's changed a lot, really, you know. Because sometimes you come in a barber shop, back, back earlier on in the days, you know, the guys that you could interact with, sometimes you come in or you can't interact with some people because more time, man, like Apache and Indians, you know. So some, some of the more youthful places, yeah? Yeah, yeah some of the more youthful, but they're not too social, you know what I mean? So you kind of stick with you. More sort of business orientated and not too interested. Yeah, not too interested. Only interested in the money and not the human aspect of it, you know what I mean, or the brother. Back in Hernhill, a long-standing customer and close friend to those in the shop arrived for a haircut. The man, known only to the film as Bird, was visiting the shop for the first time since being diagnosed with lung cancer one month prior. no, it's all right. It's cool. It's all right. It's cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Don't make one of our Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. All right. We'll talk, eh? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yes. I do not believe it's a task. Come on. Let me know what's that. You know that's right. Huh? Point to your gun, honey. You know, brother, that drink with the other wife. Does he say that he doesn't realize I'm burned? I'm telling you, I feel so bad. I couldn't, I couldn't even stand up a while ago to see the man. He's been a client for years. The cancer touching me. Serious. Johnny, man, I have long enough. Sad to say, but him not have long enough. I'm sad to say it, but him not have long. I know we should come a worse enemy right now, but he's not gonna come through that. He's not gonna. If we take him so fast and so hard, lager, like you see how fast you take him? A month, the man say me in the hospital, you know, just one month and look for the man already. I'm an uncle for six months. Huh? Oh man. Are you serious? Oh well, Johnny, you know, get to look for him. Johnny? When the man in the cab, because the cabman I'm trying to move him to the cab the man we are driving her. So I said, no man, the trouble is one day, because I know that person. And I said, Bird, I said, Bird. No man. Bird couldn't answer me. But then why is the bird in the room right now? I can't tell him nothing like that, man. No, 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 so. Is he that time we see me here that day? I speak to him the following week, I didn't see him, so I said, what bird is My mom said, call him. I mean, phone him. He said, ask him different the same day when he leave. He ain't nothing else. When he said, but check up. It looks like at that time, I'm fired, Johnny. I might say, I'm going to ask him to tell you what. Johnny, what are you doing? Johnny, what are you doing? Johnny, what are you doing? Johnny, what are you Before it was tough area, they say, but well, now it's okay. They say it's tough area. Tough area, yeah. It was tough area. Yeah. It was tough area about 10, 15 years ago. But now it's getting much more better. Area is okay, no problem at all. It was very cheap area, now it's getting more expensive. Before it was, how can I say, too much fight and everything, it was here. But now it's getting much more better. Most hair, Type is nearly the same, short back and size. Yeah, so quite common. <laughs> quite, yes, quite common. All the same things there. Yeah. Hot, uh, short back and size. Before it was long hair, it was fashion. Now it's short hair is fashion. Most of them they do the short back and size. So what would be more common sense than this? Actually, the last ten years, I can say nearly the same, short back and size. Nothing different. Yeah, I can say 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it was long hair fashion. Last 10, 15 years, always is short hair is fashion. And I came to this country about 87. Since then, I do this business. Always you're gonna watch, maybe one or two years you're gonna watch. And then you start slowly, slowly, your family, your friends. And slowly, slowly, you pick it up. And one day suddenly you look, you cut hair, you do the shape, that's it. <laughs> and then uh, slowly, slowly you learn more, 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 that's it. So did you have your um, own barbershop in Turkey? No, no, when I came here I got my own shop. Yeah. Tamam tamam. Abi. Thank you. <gülüyor> 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 <gülüyor>
Now very nice. Yeah. Yeah. The Olympic coming. Club and change it. Change people coming. East Spanish, Turkish, Italian, Asian. The very nice area. Club. Uh, my city, the capital, Ankara. Ankara capital. Uh, the Istanbul very big city, Turkey. Population 20 million. Istanbul, just Istanbul. Yeah, Ankara the six million population. Still yeah. big. Yeah, big. The, yeah, I learning the Turkey. Mm -hmm. The uh, five years yeah, the trainee after the yeah, cutting yeah, hair, yeah. shaving. Yeah, I do it the beard shaving line yeah. design. Mid afternoon began to set in over London. In Catford, a restaurant situated next door to the barbershop was preparing a menu of various fresh Caribbean dishes. Yeah, you know, you have lunch. You want jerk pork or you want jerk chicken? I mean, about two laps a day, you know? Hey, you want a lap for you? I'll swim with that name thing there. Swim with that name for you. You want a jerk pork? What's my jerk pork? Yeah. All right. Guinness pork, so I guess pork. Are you on the Magnum too? No, I'm on the Magnum. It's a long-standing tradition for a father to bring his son to the barbers. It acts as an iconic setting for a youngster to bond with his elders and experience an early introduction to manhood. And embracing the mature atmosphere of his peers can be overwhelming at times. Yeah, yeah, and sea crab. Yeah, man, jerk chicken and jerk pork as usual. Manish water, see and we. Bar me. Bad news, is it bad news? Hmm? You're not gonna put me on news, isn't it? News? Yeah. No news. Oh. That's not news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, 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 don't make a deep black like, like that, isn't it? Yeah. Do you ever get your hair cut next time? No, I grow my hair, innit? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, jerk pork. Before short here, jerk the pork and drink your juice with rice and peas, you know? Yeah, jerk chicken. It tastes really good as well. It tastes good, nice, real nice. You have to come and try it when you don't do your work, you know? Yeah. Nice. Are you ready, Malachi? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the moment. Let's try it. Oh, I'm Minya. Did you say Uncle Chris? Did you say Uncle Chris? Yeah, I'm on call me as Uncle Chris. Too much fire dry out. No juice, you know? Yeah. Before I get to I just bust a, a Heineken or a Guinness and just wet it with it. You know, just feel nice, you know. Yeah. Tender and nice when it's finished. Yeah. Definitely. Back inside the shop, the rate of custom had begun to slow. We had been informed that the routine of business can become inconsistent throughout the afternoon. However, today an occurrence down the road had led people to avoid the street.
The only information the documentary could gather was from another local hair salon owner, just a quarter mile down the road. Yeah, she was crossing the, pe the pedestrian, just here. With old lady? Young old enough lady. Really? Yeah, really? so the Marks and Spencer struck. Big white lorry was coming, so it knocked her down here. Pardon? Just an accident. Just an accident, yeah. Random. But I heard, I heard the lady's dead. I'm not, because if the head is severely removed, you get what I'm saying? So I heard she's dead. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. But the road was all blocked off. Everywhere was all blocked off. Left, right, and center. The, it was about 2.30 it got cleared. It's about 2.30 it got cleared. But it's just a pity. Yeah, there's always, because the pedestrian here, it is so bad. Every day, it was two months ago, a little boy got knocked down right there. And I was the one who went and given an, give him an helping hand. The car knocked him, was going across the road. The car knocked him, so I had to bring him inside. The car left? No, just here. Yeah. Just right here. The car go like the car, because he was okay still. Oh. He was okay still. And they stopped? So, yeah, he stopped. Yeah, the lady, the, the lady driver, she stopped. Yeah. And, you know, I uh, checked the little boy out. All his, all his limbs was moving in capable and order. So, the lady, yeah, the lady went. I took the little boy in, gave him some water, make sure his legs was working and everything. Yeah. So, but here, the need, the need to sort the pedestrian lights out right here, because it's very dangerous. The collision had happened just after 9am that morning. A female pedestrian aged in her 90s had died at the scene. The City of London continued to move. I don't know being a barber because actually I never liked the work. I was afraid of barber, so. You was afraid of barbers? Or yeah. Barbering? Yeah, I was afraid of barber, of the barbering. Yeah. How come? Uh, in those times, when the barber trimming is like, when he hold is like, you see him with the big scissors, you think as a young boy he's gonna cut off your head. It's just like it was mad. Like when you use a chair, it seems quite daunting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and when the barber hold you can't move. You can't move. When you say move, and you, you know, when you're a child, you're like this, and all you can't move, and then you see him get the raise, and he's. I just, I just laugh about it. Because we still, we still get kids who don't like to sit down, but we, it's, it's changed. We don't do it like that because the, the, over the years, technology has changed. So we don't use much like scissors, they have like shears now instead of the scissors. So, so it's a bit of an easier experience. Yeah, you know, it's more of an easier experience for people. But in those time when I was cutting my ear, boy, when I heard I was to go to the barber shop, it was the worst day of my life. It, it, it's similar to here, shops. If you have an outdoor barber, it must be your mum or your uncle or your brother. Yeah. But the same traditional, don't change. Right now you're in Jamaica. Because yeah, you're in a Jamaican shop. You're in Jamaica, it's like you're in the Jamaica soil. So you're gonna see it, Jamaica. The streets of South London continue to occupy itself outside the barber shop. To some, it is an unfamiliar place to pass by and observe from car windows. To others, it is a time-honoured place of proverbial acquaintance. The long summer day had moved on into late afternoon. And back at Hearn Hill, a number of local characters appear to meet and raise discussion at a comfortable social setting of the barbershop. 
an environment rife with expression and freedom to speak, it seems a city consistently on the move can be let up and be brought to a halt to stop and discuss amongst friends. And this is happening every day at the many barber shops dotted around the 1,572 square kilometres of London, making easy comparison to other venues of congregation, such as pubs and coffee shops, forcing us to rethink these shops as key meeting places within the city. Having returned later in the day, gave the opportunity to speak with the manager of Clipart, Johnny, a professional from Portland, Jamaica, and having lived in London for a large part of his life, Johnny was asked to shed light on what it's like to work in the industry. Well, this barber, this barber shop has been around for about 14 years now. Um, I'm a family member, which is a family business, so that's the reason why I've been working here for so long. And um, it's quite busy and friendly and socializable, socializing people coming here at times and things. Well, to me personally it's fine, I haven't got a problem. I like to correspond with people, meet different people from different places and share our thoughts and views about the way life is today. So it's a quite healthy environment. You know? Different people share thoughts, speak about life. And at the same time, you've been paid to do your heart, to do your work. So, building a relationship with your customer. Well, I'm, I would say I'm a good barber, and when you have customers that come to you time to time, week to week, month to month, year to year, it's automatically they becomes loyal. Most of my customers, I don't, they don't need to tell me anything. They just come and sit down and, and know exactly what they want. Sometimes people come around with emotional problems. That I try to give the best advice according to who yeah. can you Can you, um, can you opinionate? Well, not really. I, sh I, sh I show my sympathy and, you know, Sometimes I'm so sensitive towards the hurt and um, I let my heart speak for me. Uh, so you don't pass judgment? No. I listen and I try to give the best advice I possibly can. Well, I've been fascinated about being a barber from I was very young and it's growing to me. And you know, I used to cut my little brothers, little kids on the street, I used to just call them, give them free haircut, and that's how I get my practice. And, it's quite good. I like it. It is a, it is a, it is a heart. It is a heart, and it's also a skill. So. When I was how old was I? I was 18 years old, and I said I want to become a hairdresser. My dad was proud. Everyone was proud, and they said, "Okay, go for it." So I went to college, and after I finished college, I went to a stylist course. Done that for 18 weeks, and then I said, "You know what? Let me get into the business." It clicked when. Um, to be honest with you. I've always, I've always been surrounded by hairdressers all my life. My dad used to take me to my uncle every single, every single Sunday when I was five years old, all the way up until I was 16. So barbershop's always been an atmosphere for me, even from a young age. So I knew how it was in a barbershop, but I, I, always, thought, I always thought I could actually become a hairdresser one day. As, as I was training, as I was watching haircuts, barbers used to tell me, look, you're not supposed to learn the haircut first. 
watch the haircuts, see what I'm doing with my hands, see what I'm doing with the comb, see what I'm doing with the scissors, see how I'm standing. Okay, we've watched the haircuts, but I said you've got to first learn how to shave. Because shaving takes um, skill. So I went home, put a straight razor in my hand for six hours, I held it, using different positions where I, I tried to imagine a face, I got a balloon out and started shaving a balloon, and just imagining it was a person's face and switching the blade in and out of my hand. For six hours straight I was doing that, non-stop twisting it in my hand, so my hand got sturdy and not, not shaking. And then, um, yeah, it depends on the person really, it depends on how much ambition you have for something. Because anyone can do it, anyone, if you want to be a hairdresser, you can do it, it's just if you want to. Barbering for me, let me just say this is, is like art. It's like a, if you picture the customer as a canvas, an open canvas, it's basically that, you're drawing a picture. And so that, that person says, give me this type of hairstyle. So you picture it in your head, and as if it's like a pen to paper, you're drawing that for the person. And they say, is that it? No, no, change this. That's like hairdressing, that's how I see it. It's more of an art. I see it as more of an art, because I'm a very artistic person. So I just, I just hone on that sort of things. I just, yeah, I try and perfect everything to the customer's needs. Saf's barbershop in Hackney differs in regards to the obvious dissimilarities of social interaction. It's not so much a place to talk as it is a place to relax. The traditional Turkish style of barbering creates an almost euphoric state of calm for those who wish to receive a treatment that diverts slightly from just getting their hair cut. Evidence of trademen using tools to groom other individuals has been discovered in artifacts dating back to 3500 BC. The purpose of a hot towel shave is to loosen the skin and open the pores of the customer, easing the experience. Roughly 12 miles south of Clapton, evening began to cast over the area of Catford, and two of Fisher's regular customers arrive at the shop for a trim. Fisher, yeah, let's go. Four or five. Yeah, just keep me in the shop, you know. Smile, smile. How many times have you done that? I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Don't worry man, you tell us how to find your road side with all both of your backside tear up and then on the way. Money? Yeah, make too much. Yeah, what they're about to do, look. The prostitute no beat you. Okay, so, right, I had this debate yesterday, right? Um, which one do you think is, is, is worse? Out of games or films that are less rated but have a storyline of violence? The, the, the film, man. The film? Yeah. It's because, like, to me, a game, although it might have some blood in it and person getting their head cut off or whatever yeah. it may be, or stabbed or whatever, yeah. it's still an animation game. Yeah. So I think that has less effect. Yeah, less effect on him when the game, more than, than the film. Than what a film does. Yeah, because you're watching the film. 
and he's watching it and he's a man talking to him and him too. Yeah, it could be Arnold Schwarzenegger running around, <laughs> yeah. shooting people, whoever it may and, be. And you see it and he's watching and playing the game and he's watching the film and he's playing the game. And obviously everything has, has um, a different kind of, everything comes across different on other people. So everyone's going to have a different reaction to different things. Like, you know, kids, because they're so into games, yeah, they're so into cartoons and that as well. And, and certain films, but they watch a game, I mean, they play a game, if they're so into that game, whatever game it may be, Grand Theft Auto or whatever, that's going to be, that some people are going to come up, come, like, make that come across into them as in, yeah, you know what, I'm going to go out and do that, because I'm playing Yeah, like for us, for instance, say for us, we're playing a game, but it's not going to have an effect on us, we're not going to think, oh yeah, alright, we're playing this game, this person's shooting this person, we're going to go out and go do this, do you know what I'm saying? Whereas a child or someone that's, you know what I'm saying, not... When is that child? When they're talking what year? You know, uh, it depends on... Maybe talking 10, 12, 15, 16? From, from, from so the age of... I'm talking about like a 10 year old, right? Well, yeah. I, I, the, the lifestyle I take from them, mm. them can't go to the park and sit down and cook and eat mm. and have fun with each other. Because if them do it, them go jail. Mm. Because it come down to be them broke in the law. When we are grown up, we go to Riverside, we catch a fish, we get the coat not wherever, and we come back right at the roadside, the chuck a drive past the sun, and they pack them on the fire. And we sit down there. Sometimes all the truck driver them stop, we're not cook boy, and then peep, now we pack them, take the house. Yeah, that's you what I'm up. saying. You know what I'm so saying. here, yeah, when we come here now, yeah. and me start seeing a pigeon in our tree, mm -hmm. me start tick toe for go lick down that because I know so that's a meat for me. Mm -hmm. If me lick down that pigeon, me go to jail. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Me come here and me see a wild pig like me. Say your drive go, um, um, say your drive go do over one of them places. Mm. Or your drive go like Eastbourne and I go through them bush places, yeah? And you go call one of them wild pig there. If you stop and run, you don't catch it and cook it. You got a jail car, you kill the wildlife. Mm. When we the back home now and we see a wild pig, I sure didn't that for we. You get what I'm saying? So all them little fun they take from the kids them. Then what they do, they sit down at home. And they play the game. So when them come out, I wrote one thing in their mind. When they come and say, What well, am you, man? man? You touch me for man. Because they're miserable. No fun, no in of them. They don't get no chance to be in no fun. Because all they see is war, fight, and argument. Because when that one now argue with that one for the game, and then the next thing, when him sit down and watch the TV, all him see is like, and all they bring up, all they bring up now is killing games, killing and games. When you there, so say your kids running at the sweet shop and grab one sweetie and run, take up one sweetie and come out. The cool man call police and arrest him down. Back when we go to the shop and take up one sweetie and come out. The, the, the Chinese man or whosoever who own the shop call your parents. And your parents come and talk to him and give you two slap on your backside and pay him for the sweetie. That time you don't yam the sweetie and gone down. <laughs> But over here, then call police and lock you up. So far, you start growing your yeah, police record, you start know about jailhouse and then something there. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why the kids are so miserable. Trust me. Because everything come around them one time. Then turn man and woman before time. They got to see, or you as a parent have to see that your child is going out there and trying to at least work or accomplish something or trying to work for their money, not just be expectant and reliant upon yourself, yeah. you know what I'm saying, upon your parents or people around them. Your influences or your, your children's influences come from everywhere. Like, personally, I say their main influence, yeah, there's the games, there's the movies, there's sports, there's this, but it's you as a parent. You're your child's biggest influence and you're your child's biggest protection against the world. Do you know what I'm saying? As in, you, your child is gonna, you, 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 you do so much, yeah, and you try so hard to bring up your child, yeah. But it depends on what you're watching on, like what you're watching. Like children, they soak up everything. You're so gonna be inside do your. Do we house. have a son or a daughter? I should never like our friends say she has sweet this girl. Cause them do, them got too much pride. But they want the money to come from the floor. That's what I'm saying. Me and you will go to start work for the big job. I uh, clean or sweep up the road. I have uh, certain man all of them are dead for hungry. You know, no sweep the road because you enter home. You know, you're not done to know. Sweep the street, you know. But when you're done, sweep the street, you want the money down. Yeah. And that's all. So, this is some people, this is some of them, you know. And some choice. people. Just like you was talking about the, um, what was it, the riots the other day? And, and you know what I'm saying, people going into people's shops or whatever. No matter how good or decent a person you are, there was grown men and grown women that had professions. 
proper professions and they're going in and see whatever. It's not, oh, because of how they were brought up. It was That's their own kids. Choices. It was kids and, and people that were run up in shops, yeah, and they had their parents on the phone saying, get me this, get me that. Yeah, you got those people like who are influenced by them, and yeah, you can, you will definitely. It's, it's common sense to know that okay, yeah, they weren't brought up in that right environment, and they're easily influenced by. Do you know what I'm saying? Minor things, cool. But then there's people that were brought up decent. Yeah, but decided, decided, yo, you know what? Okay, hold on. Yeah. I'm walking past this shop. Everyone else is, and hold on, look, I can see a phone there. Like, I'm, maybe I'm not. My intent ain't to go get the phone and sell it, but it's go and get the phone because it's just there. Like, hold on, no one ain't, I'm not gonna get caught for this or whatever. And or that's that person's so I'm gonna choice. take it. Yeah, they, they, made, they, that they made that choice. Whether that they know that, time. and some of them know it's the wrong choice to make, but exactly, they still made that choice. They still made that choice. They still made that choice. So, you're gonna wrap up now? Nah, I got another hour and a half to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we have a good day. We always have good time in the shop. Towards, yeah. yeah, that's why you go in the shop. You know, in the end of the evening, you always pick up early in the morning. Pick up during the day. It's a bit quiet. Then when you catch three, four o'clock, up back again. We work till eight, nine o'clock, and then we have home to the family or sit down and have a drink with the friends. And that's how we do it. You know. Mm. Yes, man. Many of the shops that create the urban buzz of community throughout the day, around London, continue throughout the night, upholding a wonderful, sustainable image of good service and an appealing front of quintessential culture, the culture of London barbering. <laughs>